All right guys, welcome back to another photographic tutorial. Today we're gonna to be talking about another common topic which is depth of field. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this term before. I'm gonna try and explain this in a fairly simple way to understand. Now, just like anything in photography, whether it be high speed sync or HDR or anything like that, it's got the very basic side to it for knowledge and, for knowledge and techniques and it's got the very advanced side to it for knowledge and techniques. So, Think of, just keep that in mind. This is going to be a basic explanation of how depth of field works and how you can adjust it and how you can work with it like that. So initially what it is, is what's in focus and what's not, or your focus fall off. Now there's two terms that you need to remember, which is SDOF, or shallow depth of field, or GDOF, which is greater depth of field. Shallow depth of field is having less things in focus in your image. You see this is a very, very common thing when it comes down to portraiture. Uh, models that are outside, you see that they're nice and sharp and the background behind them is blown out completely. Um, best ways to do this is to, to achieve a shallow depth of field is to have a wide aperture. So 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 8, 2, 2, 8, anything like that. 3, 5, even 5, 6 can, can work it. So aperture plays quite a big role in this. But it's not that. Too many people think that aperture is the only thing that adjusts your, um, your depth of field, but it's not. Focal length also plays a big part in this. If you're shooting with a 14mm lens <clears throat> and you're shooting at 2.8, because that's such a wide focal length, some of your, some of your images are still going to be sharp, even if, you, even if you're shooting at 2.8. If you're shooting with a 70 to 200 mil 2.8, you don't have to be shooting the aperture at 2.8. You can be shooting at 200 millimeters at 5.6 or even f8. If you're focused in right on your subject, the background is still going to blow out even at f8. It's not going to be as it's not going to be as milky or as blurry as f2.8, but f8, f9, you'll still get a bit of blur in the background. That's because of the compression with the lens. For shooting at 200 millimeters or 300 millimeters, you know, you're still going to get it. I remember the first. Uh, zoom lens I ever owned was a 70 to 300 5.4 to 5.6 or something like that. A very cheap lens, it was a kit lens, but because it was 300 millimeters at 5.6, that was it was a variable aperture lens, 5.6, I could still get things to blow out in the background, no problem, even at f8. So please remember that aperture plays a part as well as focal length. They both work with each other to get such a, um, a shallow depth of field. Now, <clears throat> moving on to greater depth of field, you're gonna to wanna to use this when you're doing things like product or landscape or working in a studio, when you want to ensure that your photographs are gonna be sharp. When you're in a studio and you've got studio light set up, it's very, very, very rare that you're gonna be shooting at 2.8 because the studio lights are gonna be going off and that's letting so much light into the camera especially because your sync speeds on most studio flashes are only one two hundredth of a second anyway. So you need to remember that if you're shooting in a studio, uh, a good rule of thumb is to start off at one one sixtieth of a second, F8 ISO 200. Because you've got so much control of the light, that's what you need to be shooting at in a studio. And that's gonna give you really, really crystal clear images. You can move all the way up to F22 if you wanted and increase the power of the studio lights. That's the way to do it. But having said that, you can use available light in studios just from the modeling lights anyway look we won't talk about that <clears throat> sorry guys i'm a bit sick at the moment but yeah well, look we won't talk about that but just remember that focal length and aperture plays a big part on your depth of field whether it's shallow depth of field or greater depth of field now what i've got set up here is as basic as it can get i've got a sb900 light in front of me no it's not going to be going off i'm just using this as a subject and I've got a Nikon D3S with a 24 to 70 2.8. What I'm going to be going over is the camera settings on, and you, you, you'll see progressively what happens to the photograph. You'll see it that shooting at different apertures, I'm going to be staying at the same focal length, I'm going to be staying at 70 millimeters, but shooting at different apertures is going to, it's going to, you know, it's going to adjust the image each time. It's going to be the same photograph, but I'll show you in a sequence what's happening. More and more and more and more is going to be coming into focus. Now, I'll do this in aperture priority because this is the easiest and probably the best way to do it. Aperture priority is a semi a semi manual mode where you select the aperture and the camera is going to set uh, set the shutter speed for you and you can do your ISO manually. But because the shutter speed is going to be working 
with the aperture, each image is going to be each image is going to be perfectly exposed, and the only thing that's going to be adjusted is the depth of field or uh, because of the aperture. So start off with aperture priority, and you can also do this in manual. But in manual, you've got to adjust your shutter speed as well as your aperture. So start with aperture, move into manual. Anyway, look, we'll start off. I'm going to be doing this at third stop increments. So this is this is the lens shot at 2.8. I've already got my lens. Um, I've already got my focus. <clears throat> set to manual, I focus directly on the Nikon symbol and I'll show you, this. you're going to see exactly what happens as you shoot through these progressive apertures, you're going to see more and more come into focus. So this is at, so the camera's reading, it's metering at 15th of a second at 2.8 ISO 200. So I'll open my aperture to 3.2, 3.5, 4. So that was a full stop in between those three. I'll keep going through this quickly. 4.5, 5, 5.6, 6.3, 7.1, 8, 9, 10, 11. Can you hear what's happening? The shutter speed is slowing down because I'm closing the aperture down. I've gone from f2.8, which is really wide, to f10. Now what's happening is f10 is quite small. Now because it's letting less light in through the aperture, the shutter speed's having to stay open longer, so the sensor is, is, is exposed to more light. So that's what's happening, is as soon as you close your aperture down, you're going to get slower shutter speed. So this is where you need to start working your ISO as well, keeping in the, keeping in the safe spot of your ISO. Anyway, we'll keep going. So F11, F13, F14, F16, F18, it's metering at 2.5 seconds. F20, 3 seconds. F22, 4 seconds. So at F22, the camera's saying, okay, because your aperture is so goddamn small, the, the shutter speed's at 4 seconds. Now, if I wanted to get my shutter speed in this, in this environment right here, if I wanted to get my shutter speed up to 1 60th of a second, which is a safe mark um, for no camera blur, I'm at 200 ISO, so let's see what I need to increase it up to to get to 1 60th of a second. So at the moment, I'm at 12,800 ISO. Fucking phone, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm at 12,800 ISO, and I'm still at 15th of a second. Now, I'm going to go up to 102,400 ISO, and that's given me a meter reading of 1 60th of a second at f22. <clears throat> now, I definitely would never use this ISO rate because it's going to give me so much noise. My camera can, the D3S can go up to that level, but no matter, there's no camera on the market at the moment that can shoot at 102,400 ISO and have no grain or, no, or digital noise. Anyway, look, that was an example. So at uh, like 72,000 72, or roughly, at f22, it's giving me 60th of a second, which is the fastest shutter speed. But I'm still going to get... I'm, my, my image quality is going to degrade like hell. Anyway, that's an example. I drop back down to 200th of a second, and it's saying 4 seconds. So look, I'll, have, I'll chuck all these images up on the screen again. I've put them up through before. But have a look at them again. This is the sequence on what happens. Each image is coming closer and closer and closer into focus. Now, in all honesty... Stupid car. In all honesty, I'm not sure how this works. I don't know how the camera opening up and closing down the aperture adjusts the focus. I mean, Nikon and Canon and every other camera maker out there, I would love to know exactly how it works. I'd have to do some sort of research. But then again, there's not many photographers that do know. They know how to they know how to work with it with their aperture and their and their focal length and get exactly what they want. But not many photographers know, you know how it works in the camera it's unbelievable i mean i just you think about it i'm closing down the aperture really really small and that's letting more things be in focus wouldn't you think it's the opposite way wouldn't you think that having a really small aperture it's only going to focus on a little tiny bit of the image and a big aperture is going to focus on anything in all honesty i mean if there's some guys out there instead of copying from wikipedia and, po and posting it in the comments if you if you Genuinely, if you actually know how this works, 
please let me know because I'm very interested. Don't go copying from some bloody website or forum because I'll think you're a poofter if you do. Anyway, look guys, I hope this has helped. This is going to be basic part one, aperture, um, depth of field. So I'll do another one soon and we'll go a bit more further into it. Anyway, sorry guys again, I'm a bit sick. If you guys have any questions or anything you want me to talk about photographic wise or post production wise, hit me up at phil.legetti at palmedia.com.au. Check out my website, it's www.palmedia.com.au or check out me on Facebook, just whatever. Anyway guys, hope this has helped. Cheers, bye.